Hey everyone, welcome to the weekly update here at Fishy Business. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Got a lot of things I want to go over tonight and a few fish to show you. We still have only gotten about half of the saltwater shipment in today. We will have more of that in that you can see on Facebook, but we'll talk about that in a minute. First thing I'd like to draw your attention to is something that you might miss when you come in here. Since the koi pond is such a big focal point of walking into the store and I know everybody likes feeding them and stuff, there's actually somebody kind of hanging on the outside here. Uh, swimming around in this is a real nice and big arowana. He doesn't really belong in here, but he's gotten so big and uh, he was brought in that we've got to find a home for him. And this particular one is what you'll kind of see in here, the odd fish that's, that's uh, floating around in here with the koi. The main point to bring up is to check him out as it's very rare to see an arowana swimming like it would in its natural environment in the Amazon. Now this is a fish that can jump up and catch things out of trees, that's how it feeds. If you check out some of the National Geographic videos that are out there, uh, this is a fantastically cool tropical fish that we don't usually have in a size and in a in an environment that, with the exception of the koi, is very similar to a river environment that he would have. So just something I wanted to point out as you walk in the store. Come with me and I'll show you a few other things that are happening in Fishy Business. The main thing I want to draw your attention to is the Sea View 18. If you did not see last week's video, you don't know that this is the giveaway that we have. Now it comes with a beautiful black stand and the glass tops. That is the giveaway for this month. It's the biggest giveaway we've ever done. It can be used as a saltwater or freshwater tank, but it is very, very sleek, beautiful in design. So you definitely want to come in, subscribe to Fishy Business SC on YouTube, and get in the drawing to win. You can enter as many times as you come in. You don't have to purchase anything to win. You do have to subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook and come check us out. Each time you come in, fill out a coupon and you're in the running. We just got in these beautiful rock displays uh, from Aqua Rocher. We're starting to really vamp up with them now. I've got them in a couple of different sizes. These are great if you're not super creative They've done all the work for you to do the creation. It's fantastic if you're doing any type of coral environment with salt water because it, it provides so many places where you can put coral and attach coral in so many different areas and elements in the tank, in the display, and you can really make some amazing displays with this rock. So we have that in stock right now. Something that we have a hard time keeping in, and because they're so valuable, are these lifeguard uh, turbo reactors. Reactors are fantastic if you have a saltwater aquarium or have a sump design where you want to use some type of media, some type of uh, GFO to actually clean and work on the tank separate than the normal things that would be on the tank or your normal types of uh, filtration. These are all all self-included with the, you can put carbon in them, you can put uh, bio pellets in them, you can put phosphate removers in them, you can do whatever you want to. And what's nice about them is because they sit in the, in the sump and act independently of all the other filters, all you gotta do is turn them on or off when you need to use them. So these are fantastic. They come in a lot of different sizes. They're very affordable and a fantastic way to put a little extra filtration or specific filtration depending on the demands of your aquarium. So check these out. They're behind the register. Get somebody to show them to you. They're really, really cool. Self-contained, really cool filters. Okay, on to some fish selections of the week. Uh, right here, live plants came in. You know, you'll notice in the last video we didn't have any because they were coming in last Friday, but we are full and stocked with live plants again. Live plants are selling probably twice to three times as fast as they have in the past. One of the reasons is, is because people are realizing just how beneficial they are to a fish environment. You'll get better color, you'll get better relaxation from your fish when you put them in the tank just by having live plants, not to mention how natural and appealing it looks. You can have the beauty of a saltwater aquarium in a freshwater aquarium by doing a naturalistic live plant design. And it's something that each person here can help you with. You do not have to be a scientist to keep live plants, just like you don't have to be one to keep corals. You just need to keep the ones that are, that are in the realm of what you're willing to spend time with what effort you're willing to put forth 
in keeping them. Plants like this Anubius that are floating up here are actually quite easy because of their well-developed root systems and their light requirements aren't as significant as let's say some of these smaller, less rooted system, or plants rather. So live plants are something to ask whoever is helping you with your freshwater picks and things like that. If you've ever thought about it, at least let us explain to you some of the things that you can do, show you some of the designs and aquariums that you can do to kind of enhance and make your aquarium look as best as it can be. Asian bumblebee catfish came in this week, right here, swimming around right here. Very, very cool type of catfish. Busy little catfish with, with black and white stripes. Very cool bottom feeder. Uh, the fish I'm about to show you, including that one, are gonna be for a little bit larger fish aquarium, or fish that are in your aquarium, but still in kind of the communal vein. So if you have fish that he can't get in his mouth, that's a great fish to put in there. And some of the fish that we mentioned in this video, and this one in particular is making me realize, a lot of these fish you might not see when you're in here. A lot of these fish can stay hidden in the designs that we have in the aquariums. So as you're looking through the aquariums, you may want to ask whoever's helping you as well, hey, do you have any oddball stuff? Or do you have anything, you know, I'm interested in this type of fish, would you happen to have it? Because just walking through here, there are probably about 35 to 40% of the fish that we have in fresh water that you won't see just by passing through once or twice. So especially in this section here, because this is our oddities and our oddballs, we have some really cool fish. So all that to say, bumblebee, the Asian bumblebee cats are really cool. Right down here, I have some really cool polypterus or the dinosaur fish. I always point these out because these can be elusive when you come in, uh, but they're, they have that wow factor when you actually see them. So I have the, Senegal, the uh, albino senegalis right here, and I also have the ornate polypterus that you'll see coming toward my hand, which is one of my favorites. The body pattern and the scales look very much like a boa constrictor and it gives a very beautiful display when it comes into view because it's such a different looking fish. Turquoise rainbows, I got a couple calls about this fish this week and I think a lot of that reason is because of the very well developed turquoise rainbows that we have in the 300. But Kevin got some beautiful uh, of turquoise rainbows in this week. I've got what looks to be maybe eight to maybe 10 of them. They're already developing their tur turquoise color and they really, really, really look good already. Also in with them are some beautiful clown loaches that are just the perfect size to get started in your tank. These offset the, uh, the other fish incredibly because of the tiger stripe pattern. So they are really beautiful. We got in some beautiful uh, Papua New Guinea lobsters. These are a blue and kind of gray, green lobster that gets some serious size on them. They're omnivorous, so they'll eat pretty much anything, uh, whether it be a vegetable or a meat. Uh, so for that very reason, it's good to keep them in tanks with fast moving fish like your giant danios, uh, Buenos Aires tetras, fish that get a little bit of size to them, even rainbows would be a possibility, as long as the tank's got some running room. Uh, but we got, it looks like three of them came in today. So for an oddity, those look really, really good walking around, lots of platies, lots of mollies in stock. I don't give these fish enough attention. I guess I tend to show what excites me more so than what might excite you, and that's something that I have to get better about as time goes on. Uh, because I'm jaded, I've done this for 30 years, and I, I am attracted to certain types of fish and certain things that I think will have more of a wow factor. But live bears are really cool. Uh, they're very easy to breed, which are fun for kids, or if it's like your first fish. And there are lots of different colors that pop on all of these live bearers. They're fairly easy to keep. You can keep them in mass, so you can keep a lot of them in a tank. And as you look through here, I'm going to have Connor just kind of do a sweep of some of the live bearers. And forgive me, I'll try to pay more attention to them in the future. Lots of small community tetras. I've got some neon tetras in the front planted tank. Uh, I've got some really nice lemon tetras that came in that are showing off that yellow in their fin. I have some beautiful Flame Von Rio tetras. I mean, I'm seeing these for the first time right now, so when I say beautiful, they pop. Uh, this fish would look really good along maybe some phantom tetras or something that has some black because they're so 
I mean, the red in them is really intense. So check that out uh, when you have a chance, or if you have a chance to come in. It looks like I got maybe 12 to 24 of them. I'm not very good at math. Nice Serpe Tetris came in this week. There are the black phantoms that came in nice. We got some very large rope fish in this week. A lot of people like rope fish. Uh, they definitely exhibit a wow factor when you're looking at the tank. Uh, there's a couple small iridescent sharks as well. I have some silver Ujeta gars. I guess that's how you pronounce that. I haven't had them yet, so I, I don't know. But these are very young. They almost look like needlefish. Uh, they're so young and so pointed. But again, back to the dinosaur fish and the polypterus, the Senegalis right here are really cool. Uh, so that's a quick overview of freshwater. Uh, we went over the cichlids last week. I still have a good many peacocks, and I just tore down a 300 gallon tank yesterday, and it was nothing but African cichlids. So there is a wealth of variety of those African cichlids in here, but you'll have to come in if you want to see them. So let's go see what maybe came in with salt water. Okay, so salt water now. Let's look at a few things that did come in. You're gonna see uh, just, ta-da! Okay, so let's look at a few of the things that did come in with salt water today. Gracie will make subsequent posts after the next shipment gets in here tomorrow. Let's start with lobsters. We got these really cool squat lobsters in. They are so cool. They hang out on the rock, they squat, and they stick their little pinchers way up in the sky. They have great color and they look different probably than all the other invertebrates you may or may not have in your tank. They are really cool. I don't have a lot of them, but as far as I know, they are reef safe. I, other than what they might catch that came a little bit too close. They don't get very big. This particular species doesn't get very big. And so they're another cool little thing that's not very expensive to have in the tank. The squat lobsters. Uh, lots of different starfish in this week. We're building up our cleaner shrimp and our uh, blood shrimp back up. One thing I'd like to mention about uh, cleaner shrimp, because I don't think I have in this video, in the, in the almost 30 years that I've done this professionally, typically we put, in, at least in my service accounts, we'll put a couple cleaner shrimp in and we'll leave them in there for decoration and just to have cool shrimp in there, and that's pretty common. But one thing I've learned this year in a particular client's tank is that by grouping eight to 10 cleaner shrimp in a tank, they will really set up a very naturalistic cleaning process for the fish. Uh, in this one particular tank that we have, the fish literally get up in a line and the cleaner shrimp constantly clean them all day long. And I think the important thing about this isn't so much in necessarily preventing ick, but things that we don't know that the fish could carry or things that might not be so noticeable as they're passing through. These cleaning stations, these naturalized cleaning stations, I think are actually helping to relax the fish, bring them back to a normal environment that they were in the ocean. And it's super cool to watch happen in the tank. I've never really sold cleaner shrimp as you needing a lot of them in a tank. But this is one feature that I have learned this year because I have put big groups of them in multiple tanks and they've done really well. And one particular thing, we've got a Tessalata in a tank, a Tessalata moray eel, which is a very viper-like gymnothorax eel, uh, that is even opening its mouth so that the cleaner shrimp can go inside the eel's mouth and clean it. And the eel is letting him do it, and it's a very young eel. So it's really cool to watch nature happen in your tank exactly the way that it would in the wild. And that isn't something that I've been a big proponent of pushing on people. But it is something that as you get lots of saltwater fish in a tank, might be worth adding a few extra cleaner shrimp. So long-winded explanation back to the fish. Um, we got in some seahorses this week. Beautiful filament uh, flasher wrasse who is flashing at the moment right here. I don't know if you'll get that in the later video, but he is showing off beautiful colors. This is a Parachelinius wrasse. Really, really awesome wrasse. Very peaceful, stays out, hardy. Uh, if you've got a reef tank, this is one of the perfect grasses for it. Lots of urchins came in this week. Uh, cardinal fish are back in stock. Uh, there are a lot of things that are in the invertebrate section that I'm probably not going to go over just because of length of time with the video. But this is a section that Gracie usually fills on Thursday, so we'll probably have a lot of cool things in as there are already a few cool things in today. 
Let's go look at some of the fish out here. Beautiful, beautiful queen angelfish. Already showing the color on the crest came in. And the harlequin tusk, it's out and looking beautiful. Uh, judging by the price, this is probably the Australian variety. Beautiful, beautiful fish, very hardy, super wow factor. Maybe not the safest for a reef, but if you've got a fish only tank or a tank that's built primarily for fish, harlequin tusk is a must just because it stays out. It's a thick bodied, long lived fish. You haven't seen any of the previous videos. I have a juvenile emperor right beside an adult emperor. This fish right here is a juvenile uh, variety of an emperor angel. This is the what it morphs into as it grows, the adult variety. So really cool to have them in a tank uh, right side by side with one another. Now, something else we have not had in a while are yellow tanks. Uh, Hawaii has limited the release of yellow tangs, or at least what we can get our hands on with any regularity. And I have one or two right now. Uh, so those did come in today. As you can see, we have a plethora of blue tangs that Gracie ordered. And some very small, I mean mega small yellow tangs right here. Passer Angel, probably the hardiest angel that you can buy. Lots of damsels. Uh, the Aptasia eating filefish. A lot of people have Aptasia that pops up in your reef tanks. If you want something that looks like a leaf that hides a lot of time but then swims out and makes a really cool appearance, the Aptasia eating filefish or the leather jacket filefish might be for you. They're not spooked very easy and they will definitely eat Aptasia. They're really cool. Fox faces are back in. Beautiful fish if you want some yellow in your tank. Uh, and a hearty, hearty, long-lived fish. I got a blonde Deso Tang in. It's a good, nice size as well. Lots of hogfish, lots of different wrasses came in this week. Another Emperor Angel on this side. But I think the wealth of salt water is going to be here tomorrow. So if you'll watch Fishy Business on our Facebook page, Gracie will be posting pictures of all the newbies that come in. And if I can this weekend, I might try to shoot some live video and throw it on YouTube. So. All that to say, thank you for tuning in. Um, November's almost half over, it's insane. So time is running really fast. The giveaway, we've got 17 more days maybe to, uh, to do the giveaway. I hope you have a great weekend. Come see us this weekend, I'll be here. I'll help you with any questions you have about your aquarium. We're all here to serve you. Take care, peace out.